Good morning, New Beginning Church, and our online family and friends. Thank you once again for tuning in with us. You know, I woke up this morning thinking about the goodness of God and how God has just truly blessed us. God woke us up this morning. He, he's given us health. He's given us strength. He's given us a mind to serve him. And we are so thankful, and all of our praises belong to him. Our scripture today comes from Psalm 46, 1 through 3, and also verses 8 through 10. And it reads, God is our refuge and strength, always ready to help in times of trouble. So we will not fear when earthquakes come and mountains crumble into the sea. Let the oceans roar and foam. Let the mountains tremble as the waters surge. Verse 8 says, Come, see the glorious works of the Lord. See how he brings destruction upon the world. He causes wars to end throughout the earth. He breaks the bow and snaps the spear. He burns the shield with fire. Now verse 10 says, Be still and know that I am God. I will be honored by every nation. I will be honored throughout the world. Verse 10 again says, Be still and know that I am God. I will be honored by every nation. I will be honored throughout the world. Hallelujah. Our song this morning is every praise is to our God. We can't take credit for anything. Every praise is to our God. Help us sing. Every praise is to our God. Every word of worship with one accord. Every praise, every praise is to our God. Sing hallelujah to our God. Glory hallelujah is to our God. Every praise, every praise is to our God. Every praise is to our God. With one accord, every praise, every praise is to our God. Sing hallelujah to our God. Glory hallelujah is to our God. Every praise, every praise is to our God. God, my Savior. Praise. 
Father God, we thank you now. We bless your name. We thank you for your mercy and your grace. We thank you for another privilege, another honor, another opportunity to come to worship you, to praise you, to honor you. We thank you for another opportunity, Father God, to lift your name, to hear your word, to be blessed by you. Now, Lord, we ask you to bless us as we go forward in your word. Bless us, Father God, that you will receive the glory, that we will be better, and life will be different. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and thank God. Let me thank those who are watching by our live broadcast, both on Zoom and Facebook Live. It appears that Facebook Live is having some technical difficulties. That's why you can't see us. If you would, move over to Matthew Davis on Facebook Live. Zoom, rather, is having some technical difficulties. And is that way all over the nation right now. So if you would, go over to Facebook Live. Matthew Davis, if you would. Matthew Davis, New Beginning Church. If you're following us on Zoom, there are some issues going on right now throughout the nation with Zoom. So if you would, go to Facebook Live. Matthew Davis, New Beginning Church. Let me again thank those who are joining here with us on today. We're blessed to the Lord to have another privilege, another honor, another opportunity to come to you live from our remote broadcast here at the New Beginning Church. Again, thank you for joining us and being a part of this, our service. Today, we'll call your attention to Isaiah chapter 26. I'll be reading just one verse in your hearing. Isaiah chapter 26, verse number 20. Isaiah chapter 26, verse number 20. I sure wish we could get a picture on Zoom, but we just can't get it right now. Um, there are other churches reporting problems with Facebook, I mean with uh, Zoom, so please follow us on Facebook, Facebook Live. Isaiah chapter 26, verse number 20. When you found it, you will discover these words. It says, come, my people, enter your chambers and shut your doors, doors behind you. Hide yourself as it were for a little while or a little moment until the indignation is past. I want to talk about God's stay-at-home orders. God's stay-at-home orders. Just a few months ago, we would never have imagined that God would have anything like stay-at-home orders. We would not have even imagined that our great United States of America would have anything that would be considered stay-at-home orders. We wouldn't even imagine any slowdown in our economy. But around mid-March 2020, the United States offered some directives to his citizens and those who are visiting these United States of America. These directives were to every American. It started in the great state of California. It branched out, now it covers the entire nation. These stay-at-home order included things like don't go to school, don't go to work, don't leave the house unless you really, really have to. Later on, the orders was expanded. This particular day, it started with 42 states issuing stay-at-home orders, various kinds, very various types of orders were issued, but they affected, these orders had an effect on 42 states. 
including the District of Columbia and Puerto Rico. It affected, at that time, it affected only 316 million Americans. But today, my dears, we go down in history realizing that every American, and not only every American, but every person in the world has been affected in some way by stay-at-home orders. You see, we're recording from a remote location. Not only were we advised not to go to work, not only were we advised not to go to school, not only were we advised not to even go out of the house unless we really, really have to, we were advised even that the church doors be closed. Through these orders, we were advised that first, that we should not have gatherings more than 50 people. Then we found out that we should not have gatherings more than 10 people. Then we were advised to not go to the church nor to school or to even the hospital except for essential reasons, life and death situations. People who were not considered essential employees began to take off work and work from home. These stay-at-home orders were put in place simply to protect us from the widespread of the COVID-19 known as the coronavirus. The stay-at-home orders were issued simply so that we could, we could be safe, we could have a safe haven, and the idea from the health authorities was that if we stayed at home, it would make a difference between life and death. It would slow down the spread. It would not cause people to die in proportional measures. But now all over the world, millions of people have died as victims to this great disease called COVID-19. I want to say to you this morning that even though it goes on record that California, New York, Houston, in many other states, now every state have caused men to stay at home because of some stay-at-home orders. I want to say to you that it was not the very first stay-at-home order for the sake of safety. When we look at the text in Isaiah chapter 26, we move down to verse number 20 we find out that the prophet Isaiah say, says to Judah and to Israel, come my people, and Isaiah the preacher, Isaiah the prophet is talking on behalf of God. And he says, come my people, enter your chambers. God is speaking and God is saying to all of us who, who are his, he is saying, come my people, those who, who love the Lord, those who have committed themselves to him. Please don't let, it, don't let me mislead you. Don't let, don't let me say something that makes you think that I'm saying that these stay-at-home orders today could be compared to the stay-at-home orders of Isaiah Day. The reason for the stay-at-home orders, either one of them, is for the sake of saving lives. Isaiah is writing at a time where the Assyrian army is tantalizing and frustrating the children of Israel. The Assyrian army was killing off those who love the Lord. Yes, the Assyrian army had taken over uh, this place and taken over this people. 
until Isaiah pins the words of God, starting in verse number 20, 20, and he moves back up to verse number one. He says that this is a song that you ought to be singing. This is a song that all of us who trust in God ought to be singing this song. You see, Isaiah is preparing this people for the millennium return of Jesus Christ. He is preparing them by saying this is a song, and this is a song of the righteous. My dears, I say to you this morning that, that everybody can't sing the song of the righteous. Everybody who, who say that they're singing the song cannot sing the righteous song. Isaiah says to the people of Judah, he says to them that we have strong cities. He says God will appoint salvation for the walls in Bulrath. Isaiah, Isaiah says to us today that we need to understand that even in what we're going through, you will be kept in perfect peace if your mind is stayed on Jesus. Isaiah is talking about us, and he, he's not only talking to them, but he's preparing us for this great millennium. You see, people talk about leaving here and going to heaven. People talk about how they're going to be washed in the blood of Jesus. But I just want to let you know, without Jesus the Christ on your side, you can forget about heaven. I say to you today that you must trust in the Lord. Isaiah says, trust in him. Keep your mind stayed on him. Because he that trusts in the Lord, trusts in the Lord forever. He says, the Lord is our everlasting strength. The Lord is our strong tower in times of storm. We have embarked today upon a threat of a virus. Mm -hmm. During those days, the, the people of Judah was bombarded with the threats of the Assyrian army. They were opposed to God's chosen people. Let me just say to you this morning that even though you are a child of God, you need to understand that rain must fall on the just as well as the unjust. Every now and then, we're going to have trouble in our lives. Every now and then, we're going to have some issues that will come that we won't like. Yes. Let me just say to you this morning that the athlete will tell you, no pain, no gain. We need to understand that every trouble that comes upon us has come to make us strong. Well, none of us today want to be affected by a deadly virus. None of us today want our family members, our friends, and our neighbors affected by a deadly virus. I want to say to you that stay-at-home orders have been issued. And those stay-at-home orders have been issued for our protection. We need to understand that in Isaiah's day, the stay-at-home orders were issued for their protection. The reason why the orders had to take place in the first place is because God's people needed protection. Let me say to you today, my dears, that regardless of, of what things look like on the horizon, if there's going to be any protection, that protection has to come from Almighty God himself. You see, our money can't protect us. Money can't buy us anything right now. Our houses and our land cannot protect us. Because our houses and land is not enough right now. Yes. Let me just share with you today that our degrees on the wall cannot protect us. Because our degrees come to naught when it comes to this deadly virus. 
Let me say to you, your power and your prestige can protect you. Because when we look at the world in which we live, everybody, the prestigious or not, are being affected by this deadly virus. Your ability to borrow money, your 401k, your 403b, your 501c3, nothing can protect you now but Jesus. This is a good time for us to turn to the Lord. Turn to the Lord, for he is the only one who can and will protect us. I just want to say to you today that you need to turn to the righteous God. Turn to the God that never sleeps nor slumbers. Turn to the God that makes ways out of no way. And let me, let me say to you today, if you have not caught the virus, if you are not asymptomatic, if you're not symptomatic at all, let me tell you, it's not because you've been so smart. It's not because you didn't come in contact with the wrong people. It's only because of God's amazing grace that he has blessed you one more time. Yes, it's God's grace that keeps us. It's God's grace that relieves us from every ailment. It is God's amazing grace that makes us who we are. When we look at the text, we need to understand, as the psalmist in Psalm 75 says to us, the psalmist says in Psalm 75 and 3, when the earth quakes and its people live in turmoil, I am the one who keeps the foundation firm. God himself is the only one who can keep the foundation firm. God himself is the only one who can keep us on the straight and narrow. Let me just say to you today, you can't even keep yourself. You can't even keep your own mind. You can't even keep your innermost being. You can't even keep your own heart. That's why we ought to pray every day of our lives, Lord, keep our minds. Lord, keeps our heart. Lord, put a guard over our mouths. And Lord, guard our hearts. Because at the end of the day, you cannot keep it for yourself. It takes God to keep you. Well, we found out the other day that regardless if you're young or old, this virus affects everybody. I want to say to you today that regardless if you're young or old, God is the only one who can keep you. That's right. There are testimonies coming out of hospitals. There are testimonies coming out of private homes of people that's being delivered from this deadly virus is only because of the goodness of God. Someone asked the other day, well, why didn't my family member get, get delivered? Why didn't my family member get healed? Let me just say to you today, the God that we serve is a sovereign God. He does whatever he wants to do. With whom he chooses to do it. Any way he chooses to do it. Because he is the sovereign God. I thank God for who he is. I thank God for what he does. I thank God for the way he does things simply because God himself does things that we can't do. I am so glad that God didn't leave it up to me to be God. I'm so glad that God didn't leave it up to you to be God. I'm thankful that God is God and God is God by himself. In the text, Isaiah he talks about the fact that people are being bombarded. He says that the, the earth will give up their blood. He's saying to them, those who've been killed by the Assyrian army, God will take them and God will bless them in the resurrection. He says to us today that regardless of how oppressed we may be, that the situation is going to be turned upside down. He says the first shall be last. He says the last shall be first. He says the oppressors will be dealt with. Let me just share with you, regardless of what people are doing in the dark, God is going to deal with it. Yes. 
Regardless of what people are doing in the light with their boldness, God will deal with them. He says here in verse number 20, you do what you're called to do. And he said, whatever you do, go in your house. He says, come, my people. Go in your chambers. This word chambers is your apartments. This word chambers is your house. This word chambers is your shotgun journey. Whatever you are, whoever you are, go and call on the Lord. It says to us today that it doesn't matter if we're rich or poor. It doesn't matter where we live, if it's in a gated neighborhood or not. He's saying to us that God is even in the shotgun sharing. It says to us that even the man who walks the street that has no home, go in to your cardboard boxes and, and, and stay there until the Lord has blessed you and the Lord has allowed his vengeance to pass over. God is the one who gives vengeance. Vengeance belong to the Lord. Vengeance is God and not ours. You see, this is not a flesh and blood warfare we're fighting. This is a spiritual warfare in high places. This is a warfare where, where men can't see. It is a warfare between God and Satan himself. And God already has the victory. He says, come into your chambers and and go in and shut the door. This word door or doors means a valve. It's like shutting off a valve to make sure that the flow stops. Let me just say to you, God alone can stop the flow. God alone can stop us from, from being affected in a negative way. Say to us today, my Christian brothers and sisters, that God is trusting that we will pray for our nation. God is trusting that we will call on him for our kindreds. God is trusting that we will tell, talk to him about our children. It says, come and my people, my people are the same, my people that he talks about in 2 Chronicles and 1 Chronicles. The same ones that he talks about if my people who are called by my name. If my people who will set aside their evil ways, if my people will turn toward me and pray, then will I hear from heaven. Then will I heal their land. Amen. You see, much of this is dependent on God's people, not on the others. Much of this is dependent on how we react to it. People all over the world is waiting on Christians to stand up and be Christians. Waiting on us to call on him. Waiting. The world is looking at us and, and waiting to see how we're going to handle it. God is turning to us saying, I'm just waiting on you to call on me and submit unto me. Mm -hmm. God is looking for us to go in our houses, shut the door. It is the same shutting of the valve, the same shutting of the door that Jesus talks about in Luke chapter 11 and Matthew chapter 6. It is the shutting of the door that Jesus talks about. He says that when you get ready to pray, Go into your secret closet. And after you've gone into your secret cl closet, then you shut the door. All of us ought to have a prayer ground. All of us ought to have a place to pray. All of us ought to have somewhere that we get along with God on a regular basis. Where we talk to God and allow God to talk to us. You see, our prayer time ought not be an order for God to go feel on a regular basis. Our prayer time ought to be communion with God. Our prayer time ought to be getting along with God where God can talk to us and we can talk to God. Amen. Yes, it ought to be our prayer time that, that we spend with God. This is a good time while we're sitting in the house, while we have a lot of time, while we're spending time with our families. It is a good time to talk to God. I see a lot of people posting dances. I see a, a lot of people posting standing against the wall on their head. I, I see a lot of people posting how they partying with their children. But I do not see a lot of people posting how they getting along with the Lord and how they are teaching their children to get along with the Lord. The Bible says, go, come, my people. Even when we get along there ought to be a characteristic about us that when we get along, we talk to God. 
You see, we can avoid to drive to work and from work at this point in time. That's some quality time to talk to the Lord. We can avoid to, uh, the hustle and the bustle since school is not in now, not in session. Traffic is not as heavy as it used to be. It's more time that we can spend in the house talking to the Lord. He says, go in and shut the doors. And when you shut the door, shut it behind you. What he's saying is, when you go in your secret place and you shut the door, you stay there, look at the text, and realize it's just for a moment. This word moment in the original Hebrew means that it is the winking of an eye. It is the blinking of an eye. It's just for a moment. Let me tell you, regardless if we've been in this pandemic since November or March or not, it's just a moment. It's just the winkling of an eye because it is not to be compared to the eternal life that God is going to reveal to us. He talks to them and he promised them through this song, he promised them this great millennium. He promised them that, that those who are living right for the Lord, those who are about God's business, have this great millennium to look forward to. He says, go in your house and stay in there until the indignation has passed, until God's rage has passed, until God's revenge has passed, until God's anger has passed. We ought to be willing just to sit in the house for a while and talk to the Lord. We ought to be willing to sit in the house for a while to, to get, get to safety. We ought to be willing to, to heed to, to God's stay-at-home order. Because as you stay at home, it is quality time to spend with the Lord. Verse 21 of this text declares, For behold, the Lord comes out of his place. Let me just tell you, God will leave his holy place. Number one, to protect us. He'll leave his holy place. Number two, to, to deal with the offender and the oppressor. God has a way of dealing with them. It doesn't matter if it's 45. It doesn't matter if it's 1600 Pennsylvania. It doesn't matter if it's across the street. God has a way of getting revenge on our behalf. Stop fighting your neighbors. Stop being frustrated with your coworkers. Trust that God will fight your battles for you. For behold, the Lord comes out of his holy place, out of his given place, out of his place. God will come out of his place to, to punish the inhabitants of the earth for their iniquity. Let me tell you, sin will be dealt with. Sin will be dealt with by God. You see, we are not set here to be the law enforcers for God. God is good at enforcing the law for himself. We are not here to be the police officers for righteousness. We are here to watch what God is doing all around us. As we are here to to, to focus on God. God is here to keep us, protect us, watch over us, and God is here to deal with the oppressor. Let me tell you, and if God chooses not to deal with them, it will be will not be right for you to deal with them. He says, go in and shut your door, and God will punish the inhabitants of the earth for their iniquity. This thing that we're seeing today it has not come in and affected 15 people and poof, like a miracle is gone. It has started at one nation, went to another nation, and now the whole world is affected. We haven't seen this ever before, not even in SARS. We have never seen this before where the economy shuts totally down. We haven't seen this before where God is able to bless us in the midst of all that's going on around us because things are really bad right now. Yes, it, it doesn't matter if you're super spiritual or not. You may as well accept the fact that things are in a bad situation right now. 
Things are really bad. They're so bad right now until we can't depend on people. We got to trust in God. He says that the millennium is coming. He warns us that the millennium is coming. The earth, the earth will also disclose her blood. This is encouraging for these, these who were of God during the day, those of Judah. This was encouraging, encouragement for them. It was encouragement because when your loved one passed away, you're always concerned about what happened to them. It is encouraging because uh, the, the, writer, uh, the, the writer says that the earth will give up her blood and will do more to cover her slain. Let me just say to you, those who have been unrighteously dealt with, those who have been unrighteously killed, those who have been done a terrible deed, those who died at the hand of the enemy, if they walked with God, you don't have to worry about it. You see, Isaiah, even though he wrote many years before Jesus came, he is pointing to the resurrection that Jesus talks about. Paul picks this thought up in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, and he says to us the same thing that Isaiah is saying to us. He's saying to us what we need to understand that you, you don't need to be ignorant of this, brother. Don't be ignorant of this fact. He says the same thing in Isaiah. Don't be ignorant. I, brethren, I would not have you ignorant. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 13 through 18. He says, brethren, I would not have you to be ignorant concerning those who are asleep. He says, don't be ignorant concerning those who are asleep, but those who had this lively hope in Jesus Christ, they will be caught up first. He says, in, in the King James, he says, we will not prevent those who are asleep. This word prevent, this word prevent in the original context, in the, in the Greek word, this word pre prevent means to proceed. So he says that we will not proceed those who are asleep. But, but those who are died, those who have died in Christ, those who are already dead, they will rise first. He gives them hope, and Jesus gives us hope. Paul reiterates the fact that we have hope. The picture is painted here that we have hope looking at us, and God is going to move us toward hope. He says that those who died in Christ, those who, who died with this line of hope, those who believe the story that Jesus died on a skull hill called Calvary, they will rise first if they're dead. Those who believe that after he died, he rose from the dead, they will rise first. Paul says, I, I would have you not ignorant, brother, concerning those who are asleep. They shall be, they shall rise first, and they will meet Jesus in the midair. He says, brother, don't be ignorant about it. Don't, don't be so ignorant about it that you don't understand that there will come a day where those who died, the, the earth will give up his blood. Those who had the lie to hope, they will join us in the resurrection because after those who have died first rise from the dead, then those of us who remain will be caught up with them in midair. We will be caught up with them in midair. So you need this hope. You need this dream. You, you need this focus that one of these days things are going to be different. Hang in there because one of these days things are going to be so different until God is going to take us out of this mess. I look forward to the day where Jesus cracks the sky. I look forward to the day where the trump of God sounds. I look forward to the day where the voice of the archangel sounds so loud until the dead in Christ shall rise. And those of us who remain shall be caught up with him in midair. Don't you want to be caught up? Don't you want to be saved? Don't you want to join us in midair? And the text declares that we will forever be with the Lord on the other side. There's peace on the other side. There's hope on the other side. There will be deliverance as we move to the other side. God will always bless us and, and there will be no light on the, on the other side because, because the sun, the S-O-N, will be shining on the other side. I look to see Jesus, the one who died for me, 
the one who sacrificed for me, the one who rose for me, and the one that's coming back to get me. He's coming to get me because I believe the story. I trust that story to get me to heaven when I die. What story are you talking about, preacher? I'm talking about the fact that over 2,000 years ago, Jesus died on a skull hill called Calvary. Over 2,000 years ago, he gave his life voluntarily on a skull hill called Calvary. Over 2,000 years ago, Jesus died for you and for me. He died that we would have life. The death of an innocent man took place for guilty ones. He died, I tell you. They laid him in a barber tomb. It was a barber tomb because he didn't need it too long. It was a barber tomb because early that third day morning, early that third day morning, he got up with all power and heaven and earth in his hand. Romans chapter 10 verses 9 and 10 says to us, if we believe this simple story, that Jesus died, Jesus was buried, Jesus rose, and Jesus was seen, we can be born again, and we will leave here and die and go to heaven. If you are here today, and you are burdened by what's going on around you, I offer Jesus. Put your hope in him. Put your trust in him. Bless Jesus and keep him a part of you. Trust him today. Just trust that Jesus died, was buried, rose from the dead, and trust that that story will get you to glory. Isaiah says that there will be a resurrection of the dead. Paul declares that the resurrection of the dead will be clear at the trump of God. The dead in Christ shall rise, and those who remain will be caught up with him in mid -air. And we will forever be with the Lord. No more trouble. More, no more tears. No more problems. We will forever be with the Lord. The door of the church is open. The invitation is extended. You ought to come to be with the Lord. You can be saved. You can be changed right here, right now. Come to know Jesus in the departing of your sin. All you have to do is just trust him. Believe the story that Jesus died for your sins, that he was buried in a borrowed tomb. Early that third day morning, he rose from the dead. If you just believe the story. And these stay-at-home orders are just for a temporary period. It's just for a little while. And when we rise again from the dead, we'll be caught up with Jesus to be ever with the Lord. No more stay-at-home orders. No more schooling. No more working. No more hospitals. But we will forever be with the Lord. And I'm looking forward to the day where I can join with the beastly creatures around the throne of God crying holy, holy, holy blessed is the lamb that was slain before the foundation of the world let's thank God for who he is and what he's already done we serve the awesome and the amazing God and if you're here today and you don't have a church home or you're in between church home I recommend this one New Beginning Church where Jesus is the center of attention in the main attraction. You can be saved, but you need a church home. You need a place you can call Jerusalem right here on planet Earth. You need a place that you can do things great through. You need a home church. And if you would, message me and let me know that you want to be a part of the New Beginning Church. I message you back and, and welcome you with the right hand of fellowship, the right hand of welcome to the New Beginning Church. And God will bless you as you go. We serve the awesome and the amazing God. It's time for us to give unto the Lord. Hallelujah. It is now time for us to give to the Lord through tithes, offering, and sacrificial gift. It's time to give unto him 
the Lord himself, God has blessed us again to give. He has blessed us by giving unto us. And we thank God for what he has done. You can give by way of our cash app. Our cash tag is NBC Souls, dollar sign NBC Souls. You can give by way of our cash app. Or if you want to mail it in to the New Beginning Church, you can do so by mailing your offering to P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas, 77459. P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas, 77459. Well, thank you again for joining us, and we thank you for being a part of our service. You can continue to join us every Sunday at 9 a.m., for Sunday school and every Sunday service at 1045 on our live broadcast for worship service. You can also join us on Wednesday night at 7.20 p.m. Uh, for Bible study. All right here on Facebook Live and on Zoom. Again, thank you for joining us here on Zoom today. Uh, we, we will try to see what is going on with the Zoom uh, network. A lot of churches complain about it this morning that it's not working. So let me just say to you, thank you for joining us. To those who've been giving to our church, thank you so much. Thank you for not forgetting the church of Jesus Christ. Thank you for being a part of our service. Thank you for giving to this ministry. And thank you for going to our cash app and sending finances in. Thank you for mailing it into the P.O. Box. We thank you for being a blessing to our church. And those of you who have not been given, this is a good time to start. Go ahead and bless the Lord as God has already blessed you. Thank you so much for joining us here in our live broadcast. Thank you for being a part of our service. Uh, please come and, and visit with us when we get back to the church. But in the meantime, follow us here on Facebook Live live every Sunday and every Wednesday. Or follow us here every Wednesday or Sunday on Zoom. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Father God, we thank you now. We bless your name. We thank you, Lord, that we know that you have a place for us. We know that in the midst of oppressions, you're still blessing us. We thank you, Lord, for this great promise this great song that we will be delivered one day and in the midst of our being delivered you will bless us father god forevermore we thank you for what jesus has done we thank you for the sweet communion of the holy spirit and we thank you for being god now unto him who is able to keep us from falling unto him the only wise god unto him be power be majesty and dominion in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and thank God. We are here at the New Beginning Church, uniting the church, strengthening the families, supporting schools, and empowering neighborhoods to impact the world as we are reaching souls by lifting Jesus. Jesus says, in I, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. John 12 and 32. God bless you. God keep you is our prayer. Be blessed. See you on Wednesday night at 7.20 p.m. God bless you.